Hi, Patu Guy. This screencast is about adding and subtracting rational expressions using the lowest common multiple. So if we're asked to find the lowest common multiple of 15a squared b c to the third, 16b to the fifth c squared, and 20a to the third c to the sixth, we we need to find the lowest common multiple of those. So what we're going to look at is all the different factors of each and then get the largest version of each of those factors. 15a squared b c to the third factors into 3 times 5, the prime factorization of 15, times a squared times b times c to the third. The second term, 16b to the fifth c squared, factors into 2 to the fourth, 16 is 2 to the fourth, times b to the fifth times c squared. And then in a similar way, the third term factors into 2 squared times 5, that's the 20, times a to the third times c to the sixth. So we're going to find each of these factors and find the largest uh, number of each of those. So if we look at the, the threes, for example, uh, there's only one three in all of these, three to the first. Then if we look at the fives, there's, the five appears once in two of the factors. So we have a five to the first. The largest number of twos that appear, there's two of them here, but there's four of them here, so we have to go with two to the fourth. The highest factor of a, we have an a squared and an a to the third, so a to the third is the highest factor. In a similar way, the highest factor of b is b to the fifth, and the highest factor of c is c to the sixth. So the lowest common multiple is the combination of all these largest factors. And when we multiply them together, we get 240, a to the third, b to the fifth, c to the sixth. So when we're dealing with polynomials, we look at a similar type of process. The lowest common multiple of x to the third minus x squared minus 2x and x squared minus 4x plus 4. Well, first of all, we try to factor because we're really trying to find the factors of each of these. So x to the third minus x squared minus 2x, we can factor an x out. Uh, when we factor an x out, we're left with x squared minus x minus 2, which factors then into x plus 1 times x minus 2. So really a two-step process in factoring this first term. The second term, x squared minus 4x plus 4, factors nicely into a difference of squares, x minus 2 times x minus 2, or x minus 2, the quantity squared. So we find the lowest common multiple in a similar way. We're going to use each factor the greatest number of times it appears. So x by itself appears once, x plus 1 appears once, and then the factor x minus 2 appears once here, but it appears twice here. And so we have to use x minus 2 to the second power. So the reason we do this is when we're adding and subtracting rational expressions, we have to find that least common denominator. It's a denominator because it's always the denominator we're going to be working with here. So to add rational expressions, we're going to find the least common denominator, just like we practiced. And then we're going to rewrite each expression with the least common denominator. So for a divided by b and c divided by d, as long as the denominators are not 0, a over b plus c over d is equal to a times d plus b times c all over bd. Subtraction works the same way. The only difference is we're subtracting in the end. It becomes AD minus BC over BD. Let's look at an example with monomials. If we have 5A squared over 6B plus 9 over 14A squared B squared, we've got to find the least common denominator of these two denominators. So 6 factors into 2 times 3 times B. And 14a squared b squared factors into 2 times 7 times a squared times b squared. So the least common denominator is going to be the 3 appears once and the 7 appears once. The a appears as a squared and the largest version of b is b squared. So the least common denominator is 2 times 3 times 7 times a squared times b squared or 42a squared b squared. And so what we have to do to get a common denominator for both of these is multiply each of the two 
rational terms by the terms that make the denominator that, low, that uh, lowest common denominator. So 6b is the denominator of the first term. What it lacks is 7a squared b because to make that lowest common denominator, it needs a 7 to multiply by the 6. And then to make uh, the a squared b squared, it needs an a squared and one more b. And we're going to have to multiply the numerator and denominator by that number so that we're multiplying by 1. In a similar way, to make the lowest common denominator of 42 a squared b squared, we have to multiply the second denominator of the right-hand term by just 3. 14 times 3 is 42. The a squared and b squared are already there. But since we're going to multiply the denominator by 3, we also have to multiply the numerator by 3. Okay, what this gives us is now a common denominator of 42 a squared b squared. And now since we have a common denominator, we can add, we can multiply then add the numerators. So we have 5a squared times 7a squared b, which is going to be 35a to the fourth b plus 9 times 3 is 27. And that is the answer. 35a to the fourth b plus 27 over 42a squared b squared. Let's look at an example where we have a polynomial denominator. If we're simplifying x minus 1 over x squared minus x minus 6 minus 4 over 5x plus 10, we've got to find, again, that lowest common denominator. So we're going to have to factor the first denominator, and that factors into, we have to multiply to give negative 6. We have to add to give negative 1. So it factors into negative 3 x minus 3, x plus 2. Multiply to give negative 6, add to give negative 1. The other denominator, 5x plus 10, we can factor out a 5 as the greatest common factor. That leaves us with x plus 2. So that's what the second term factors into. Together, the lowest common denominator, the term 5 appears, the x minus 3 appears once, and the x plus 2 appears once. So 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2 is the least common denominator. So let's go ahead and factor this subtraction out so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply each of the denominators and numerators by a factor that allows the least common denominator to appear. So x minus 3 times x plus 2, all it's lacking is a 5. So if I multiply the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by 5, I will get that common denominator. In a similar way, all that the second denominator is missing is an x minus 3 term. So if I multiply the numerator and the denominator of the second fraction by x minus 3, I get what I need, the common de denominator. So what I'm going to do now is distribute the 5 to the x minus 1 and then the 4 to the x minus 3. Notice a negative times a negative is a positive, so this becomes four, negative 4 times negative 3 is plus 12. All over the common denominator, 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now just a little bit of combining like terms, and then we're done. So in the end, 5x minus 4x is x. Negative 5 plus 12 is plus 7 all over that common denominator. And that is your answer. So let's look at simplifying a complex fraction that has rational terms in both the numerator and the denominator. There's a couple of ways to do this, but the, the method I'm going to show you right now involves just finding a, a lowest common denominator for the entire each of the terms. So the lowest common denominator of 1 is just 1. The lo lowest common denominator of 2 over x is x. The lowest common denominator of this term, 3 over y, is y. And then the lowest common, common denominator of the last term is x. So when we combine of the, all of those together, seeing the most number of times each term appears, the lowest common denominator of all of them together is 1 times x times y, or just xy. 
So if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by xy over xy, what winds up happening is we, we get rid of all these little denominator terms and can simplify the fraction quite rapidly. So we're going to multiply each of these terms one by one by xy. So 1 times xy is just xy. 2 over x times xy, the x's will cancel out, and I'm left with 2y. Notice I've gotten rid of the denominator by multiplying by this LCD. If we take uh, the denominator terms, 3 over y, and multiply it by xy, the y's cancel out, and I'm left with 3x. And then this last term, 4 over x, if I multiply it by xy, the x's cancel out, and I'm left with minus 4 times y. Now, I can do one more thing, and that is factor out a y here in the numerator. And so I'm left with y times x plus 2 over 3x minus 4y. And that's all I can do with this. In this screencast, we've learned to add and subtract rational expressions using the lowest common multiple.